here and see how that works. Okay, uh, thank you very much for um, joining us tonight. Um, my name is Sally Egan and I'm the Director of Entrepreneurial Experience with the Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Vagiline Council. Um, also on the team is Courtney Woolagol. Um, she came over from the program department. Um, so she is uh, adding, adding lots of fun and exciting ideas uh, to our department. You will notice that Terry Graffin is no longer on our list of people. Um, she is still with the council, um, but you know she has a, a, a retirement coming up in just a couple of months. And so they've sort of transitioned her to another area of our council. So she's still with us. She still supports us a little bit um, when we need uh, uh, different things mailed out or help with some rewards or whatever it might be. So she's still around. She's just not directly on our team uh, any longer. But additionally with us, um, we have uh, presenting tonight is uh, Joe Schneeberger. He's from M2 Media. Um, that is our new partner um, for our magazine program. And we also have Rachel Austin. She is with Ashton Farms and that is our candy nut vendor. And that did not change at all. Uh, so we had Ashton before. The change that we had is we have moved away from West Key. Uh, they're not no longer part of the marketplace any longer, providing magazines um, for Girl Scout Council. So we now have Joe and Rachel as part of our team. So thank you very much um, for giving of your time tonight. We appreciate your time and energy and efforts that not only tonight, that you do throughout the entire Girl Scout year, supporting um, your community and the troops and the girls in your community. Um, we can only be a success because of you. Uh, there's no way that Courtney and I could do all of your positions for the entire council. And so we appreciate all of the time and energy that you give and the success that we have because of you. Um, you do help our girls learn and develop skills that last a lifetime. And we are excited to kick off this brand new Girl Scout year um, with you. And we look forward to bravely sharing our strengths. So I'm going to allow Joe to start us off with this next section. Thank you so much, Sally. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Joe Schneeberg, I'm Two Media Group. Um, I'm excited to uh, talk with you all tonight. Uh, too bad I can't be there in person to meet all of you. Um, hopefully in the future we can do that and I can meet you. But I wanted to say thank you all of you for uh, being on tonight and for your commitment to the girls as well. Um, just to go along with what Sally said, uh, this is in a, a volunteer program just as much as it is a girl program. This program doesn't happen without you. Without you, girls don't get to learn the skills that they learn for the program. They don't get to raise the funds uh, for their experiences and for their causes. So thank you for all that you do. Just to give you a quick background, um, M2 Media Group, we are a tech company and we fulfill the magazines and provide the operating system um, with the avatar that you're going to listen or learn about here. Uh, we have been partnering with councils for about eight years now. I've been with M2 for five years now. Uh, I wanted to let you know that the transition will be very seamless. There are two nut companies in um, that partner with Girl Scout Councils, um, Trophy Nut Company and Ashton Farms. We partner with both nut companies. Uh, our operating system feeds into their backend systems the same. So from the perspective of the, the customer and for the volunteers, um, everything will be very seamless. Uh, it's all uh, combined into one system and our customer care team works closely with Ashton Farms. So they are very familiar with their products and their program. So I wanted to just get us started by um, opening this up for a little bit of discussion. Um, you can either unmute yourself or if you'd like, you can uh, just type an answer in the chat box. I wanted to ask you these three questions because we're here tonight to learn how to do the program, but we wanted to just real quickly talk about why we're doing the program and what's really at stake here. So the three questions I'd like to ask are, what do Girl Scouts learn from fall product program? What have Girl Scouts experienced using the money earned from fall product program? 
and how have troops used money earned from product programs to give back to their various causes? Um, and we'll open that up very broadly. You can answer one of those questions, multiple questions, however you would like to do that, um, either by unmuting or uh, in your chat box. I think that our Girl Scouts learn a lot from the fall program. Well, I was going with girls with cookies. So hold on now, I have to rethink. <laughs> okay, well then I'll go. Um, okay. I'm, I'm Renee. Um, my girls learn a lot about um, talking. Um, this is the one sale that it, it comes a little bit more difficult. They have to either go uh, door to door or they have to, um, they have to do family and friends type um, of a sale. Cookies is a lot easier um, to, to distribute to people that they may not necessarily know. Um, so I have a troop of older girls. So their biggest thing for, for them to learn is the financial aspect of how much they actually learn from or how much money they make from the magazines and nuts versus what they make from cookies, um, which is a lot more. Um, the other thing they learn is um, how from, a, from an email perspective, they use the email system for um, um, marketing um, and talking about um, what type of um, item they want to do with their money in this, in this sale more often than they do with the cookies. Cookies just seems to be a lot easier um, and they're really busy. This one, they focus a lot about what they're going to do and market what they're going to do to their, to their group um, or, or to their customer base um, in this sale. Um, from an, an experience, what they've experienced as far as money, we have gone on trips. So they've gone to Savannah, Georgia. They're planning a trip to California. They've gone, done horseback riding, um, smaller trips around, around the state of Wisconsin. Um, and as far as giving back, um, from specifically from this program, a lot of times we do a lot of our take action projects with the money that is made from this, this program. Um, so part of their journeys um, from their take action products, we've done um, redone senior homes uh, with uh, solar lights um, and walkway type things for, for um, seniors. We've gone ahead and made uh, rain barrels for the community. We've done um, all sorts of journey type uh, projects. Our okay. girls did, sorry. No, oh, no, just ahead. thank you. Yep. Thank you, Renee. Yep. Um, our troop did a, there's a Brown's Award with it, with our funds from all the sales, but this one was one of them. And we made cancer and chemo kits and dialysis kits for the chemo patients at one of our local hospitals and the cancer patients at the local hospital. My Daisy troop is going to find a use to some of their funds and they're going to Dodge County Humane Society tomorrow. They have purchasing their, um, from their wish list, what things they want. And hopefully they will be able to bring a dog out so that they can um, interact with that. That's as much as they're able to do at this point. So they're very excited about going to do that. My older girls have done trips also with their money. Well, thank you all uh, for sharing. And again, that's really what's at stake here is just the skills that the girls learn, the communication skills as Renee alluded, alluded to, and just the understanding of the finances, and then just the trips and the causes that the girls come up with on their own. They're the, the selfless ones that think of these causes, but they need the funds to, to do that, to, uh, to take action and install solar lights into senior homes or um, chemo and cancer kits. Um, that's what's really at stake. And so I just want, wanted us to think about that. But then too, as you're uh, 
passing this on to your troop leaders, remind them too why we're doing this and why it is in fact so important, um, the program. So I wanted to um, circle around now and kind of round out this discussion by asking you, what's your why? Why are you here specifically? Uh, why do your efforts matter? Uh, why did you volunteer for the program? You don't really want to know because there's nobody else to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not the answer he was looking for. No, no I'm you, sure it isn't. <laughs> but it is a though? truth. Yes. You know what, though? But And I know some of you are feel like you're voluntold, sometimes more than volunteering. But, uh, but that means that you realize the importance of the program and you're stepping up because no one else is going to do it. But but that too, it, it, it really illustrates the importance of the program. So thank you all for stepping up. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. I'm also a troop leader here in Evansville, but sometimes going to get cookies and products, it was just really hard for some of the troop leaders or parents to get to Janesville or to Madison. So I just decided to help out and be the PSM here in Evansville, save a little bit of hassle. So, so no, thank you. And, and I wanted to, to just, again, wrap that up by just asking you all, what's your why? And you realize the importance of the program. And so thank you for all that you do. Um, I wanted to just kind of share just about myself uh, briefly. Um, I got into Girl Scouting, uh, partnering with councils about five years ago, as I mentioned, and I didn't really know what I was getting into. Um, my Mom was a Girl Scout, my wife was a Girl Scout, but beyond that, I didn't know a whole lot. And I just wanna say that since I've started partnering with councils, just that the level of commitment, engagement, intelligence, compassion, uh, you don't see that anywhere else. Um, I've done school fundraising in the past and, and I'm sure with working with other companies as well, you just don't see those those things and those traits. And, and because of that, in my experiences, I've become very compassionate or very passionate about the Girl Scout movement. So that, that's sort of my why. And I'd like to share too, really quickly. Um, I'm six foot eight. You don't get that. You don't, you're not able to tell that from the video. Uh, but my mom growing up, she was very tall as well. And she she had a shell that she had to come out of and she was a Girl Scout for eight years and she cites Girl Scouting as letting her have experiences and go on trips that she wouldn't have otherwise been able to, to do and to go on. And also uh, being very shy and feeling awkward, uh, she learned skills, confidence, uh, interpersonal skills, communication skills. And now she is a manager in finance with the Cleveland Clinic, a big hospital system. Um, it, and she works in Cleveland, Ohio, and she presents to surgeons. And, and that could be very intimidating, but she has the confidence to do that um, in, in no small part because of her, what she learned in Girl Scouting. So that's my why, and, and that's what's really at stake with these programs. Uh, you're directly impacting the future of girls by facilitating the largest girl-led entrepreneurial program in the world. You're assisting them in earning funds for those adventures um, and experiences, some of which you cited, and providing them with the opportunity to share those skills, the money management skills, the communication skills, learning confidence, They're, for them to learn those skills and for them, them then to pass those on, uh, skills on to make the world a better place. You're providing them with life-changing experiences by trusting your strengths. And one of our themes this year is Bravely Be You. So as a service unit um, in your role, what we're asking from you is to use your strength to create memorable experiences for the girls. Stay focused on the why. Um, you know why you're here, uh, but again, pass that on to the troops and just remind them why they're doing it. Be a resource and answer any questions that the troops and the girls might have. Set goals for your service unit and encourage troops to do the same. Deliver products and rewards and share the value and benefits of the program. 
the theme this year, we're really excited about it. And not just because it makes for a great giant plush, it is the sloth. And we're choosing to focus in particular on the three-toed pygmy sloth at about six pounds. It's the smallest species of sloth. Uh, we wanted to create an awareness and a learning experience in, in addition to having a fun theme animal. Um, the girls really pick up on uh, what's going on with, with some of these species, uh, some of these endangered species. Habitat destruction, the destruction of the red mangrove trees that these sloths spend all of their time on, uh, they're being destroyed at an incredible rate. And for that reason, the three-toed pygmy sloth is critically endangered. There's only about 80 or so left in the wild. They cannot relocate this species. They don't survive. They have to live. They can only survive in their native habitat um, off the coast of Panama. So we wanted to make everybody aware of what's going on and then create a learning experience for girls to learn about science and learn, it, learn about um, preserving species and uh, just conservation in general. So that's why we chose um, the sloth. And if you ever have a couple of extra minutes and you want a good laugh, I recommend Googling sloth swimming. Sloths swim at three times the rate that they can move on land and they can hold their breaths for up to 40 minutes underwater. So I definitely recommend Googling sloth swimming. So you can see here that girls have the opportunity to win their giant sloth, uh, the one that's behind me, um, as well as in the tree that's in my yard. That isn't my house, um, but it, that is my tree. So uh, to gain some entries into winning this sloth, the girls simply need to create an online account and send at least five emails to earn one entry. Um, for every additional five emails they send, they'll get another entry. So do some math if a girl sends 30 emails. She has six entries into winning this giant sloth that is 48 inches long. So we will announce the winner after the sale is complete. Um, this year, we know that girls are motivated, motivated by the rewards that they are receiving. And this year, we have a new spin on our rewards. We've moved away from girls getting all the individual tchotchkes to a more troop-based reward. So you'll see that coming up here in just a little bit. So um, what we have for you on the, for the girls on the rewards is they basically are earning patches. So if they sell at least six items for the community care, they will get the care to share. If they sell at least a hundred items, whether it is all magazines, all candy, all nuts, it doesn't matter. It can be a combination of everything. Um, they will receive that 100 plus um, circle patch that you see on the top right. And then down in the middle, um, the big tree in the middle, that is actually its own patch that is for 12 plus nut candy items sold. And then on the left is uh, the 2020 sloth swimming, that is 15 emails sent. And then on the right is the trust your strength, um, the mama and the baby sloth that's hanging from the tree. Um, that will be for three magazines sold. And so they are all, they all can be pieced together really cute. So they come together nicely. Um, but if girls only earn certain things, they still look great on their own. Um, you don't have to have all three, but we encourage all girls to earn all three of the, uh, those, those patches. We also have personalized patches um, that we will be receiving from, um, from M2 Media, the girls will have the opportunity when they go in the system, um, Joe will talk more about this later, that they will be able to create their own avatar. And then that avatar um, will be used on their personal patch that they can earn by sending at least 15 emails and having at least $300 in combined sales. Those combined sales can be in person, they can be all online, nuts, candy, uh, uh, magazines, it doesn't matter, just $300 in combined sales. So she can either choose the kayak with the sloth swimming in the water or the relaxing on the hammock with her sloth friend um, and the baby uh, hanging from the tree behind her. These patches will ship directly to the girls and uh, Joe will show you more about that later. We also have the fall and um, Girl Scout cookie crossover patch. Um, so these will be for girls that participate this in the fall for the BFF sale as well as in the spring. 
So uh, to be able to be eligible for it, they need to sell at least 25 items during this sale. And then in the spring, sell at least 30 boxes of cookies um, for the spring sale. And for both of these, they can choose how their name is represented. If they want a nickname, if they want initials, if they want their first name, um, they'll be able to do that. And again, we will be sending these directly to the girls. So the one they will receive probably around the end of the year, the first one that I showed. And then this one, we have to wait for the cookie sale to end. So this one probably won't come until about the end of May. So the rewards that we have for you, we did, um, we talked with Courtney and, and I talked with some troops and parents and girls, and we found out that, um, you know, from our surveys that we've done over the years, parents really don't want all those kind of tchotchke things. And our Juliets felt that they were left out of our troop rewards because, you know, it was a troop reward. So this year we've um, modified the troop rewards to make it possible for Juliets to be able to participate as well as girls who are in troops, but they are the only person in their troop who participated in the program. So how it's gonna work, this, uh, just, just to let you know, these, this reward structure will not, we will not see this in the um, M2 Media online program because they're, <laughs> we've created too sophisticated of a program for their software to, to be able to handle. Uh, normally, uh, councils only do kind of girl rewards. And so uh, we will work with you offline, work with the troops offline at the end of the sale once we know their PGSA. So a troop will need to look at these, uh, different levels and um, four different themes, excuse me, fire and ice, zen girl, adopting a sloth, or money manners, matters, and they will need to make a choice as to which one their troop would like to do. Um, you will be able to see on the next slide here that the structure is cumulative, so the more the troop sells, the more stuff that they will earn, and it's based on a PGSA. So um, we have selling levels one, two, three, and four. So if we have a troop with two or more girls participating, you can see that their level starts at 100, 175, 250, and 325. For our individually registered girls, our Juliets, or if a troop participates but there's only one girl participating, their level starts a little bit higher because I always say that these girls, um, they, they control their destiny. They control where their sales are. They don't have to worry about another scout, uh, Girl Scout in their troop who may not sell at the same level that they do and they're, you know, that's our PGSA. So level one for them is 175. They go up then to 250, 325, and 400. So at level one, we have an exciting themed virtual experience. Level two, they get that themed experience plus a basic activity kit and a small themed item or opportunity. Level three, they get the uh, virtual experience as well as an intermediate activity kit. So it includes a few more activities than the basic does. And then two themed items or opportunities. And then level four, again, is that virtual experience, the immersive activity kit, which is again, a few more activities. Um, and then three themed items or opportunities. So if we look at them just quickly, because uh, we have a lot of material to cover uh, tonight, um, the fire and ice uh, get blown away by a virtual fire and ice show. They will get to watch things explode and vaporize while they meet a scientist, discover the secrets behind the science, and have fun with messy erupting experiments. And if they get to level two, safety goggles will be included. Um, so you can see that they'll get the fire and ice show, an experiment booklet and safety goggles, or an intermediate experiment booklet, meet the mad scientist, and then a fun virtual background. And then we have an immersive um, booklet and then another show called the Up, Up and Away Science Show. So that's the fire and ice section. Zen girls, center your mind and calm your body with yoga or maybe goat yoga. Uh, while you learn mindfulness tips and have fun with peaceful activities, create your own Zen area, become mesmerized by a glittery uh, calm down bottle and so much more. So they will have a yoga and mindfulness lesson, um, virtually of course, with some uh, deep breathing and activity cards. 
the number of those cards will increase in the next level. Um, and then they'll also get the basic spa activity booklet. And level three, they get more mindful deep breathing yoga activity cards. Um, and another immediate spa activity booklet, uh, the intermediate instead of the basic, a DIY journal to decorate. And then at the next level, the goat yoga experiences, they'll actually get to see goat yoga happening and they get to use their stuffed animals or maybe they have a very trusting cat or dog or animal in their house that they can sort of do goat yoga with. So um, you can see the other things that are included in there as well as a yoga mat. No, we can't so, because... So then the next section, we, um, we've we started to include philanthropy um, in our reward structures. And you, um, for our cookie program, our philanthropy just went through the roof when we made it an option um, in the girl rewards op opportunities. And so here they'll be able to become a sloth hero. Um, we at the council are adopting a sloth. Um, and so they will get to meet that sloth of the zookeeper um, they will get an, I, I adopted a sloth patch. They'll also receive at level two, the bio and picture of that as sloth, provide a snack to the sloth, um, a sloth activity book, and then we'll do some fun background, virtual background. So um, at level two, you can see it's I fed a snack. At level three, um, they will be, instead of a snack, they will be providing an enrichment activity. So then their picture background will be I uh, entertained a sloth. And then at level four, um, they'll get the immersive sloth activity booklet. And instead of the snack or the um, uh, enrichment activity, the girls will be providing a sloth meal. So then their virtual background will say, I fed a meal to a sloth. Um, the other one is money matter matters, spending, saving, and earning money. Um, become a money whiz as you team up with financial experts to explore the wonderful world of money, learn all that you can do with it and discover how to make money work for you. Um, all of these activities are customized to Girl Scout levels. And then, um, so this will be a perfect opportunity for the troops, especially, you know, if they haven't done a lot um, in the way of selling yet. So as a perfect opportunity before the cookie season begins to start learning more about financial literacy. So the virtual program will happen at level one. At level two, um, they'll get uh, some themed hand warmers so that they'll be able to use those during the cookie program. Level three, there'll be a customizable cookie car sticker. And level four, they'll get a game of life activity kit and a money zippered pouch. Um, so those are the troop rewards. I do see that some chats came in. So let me sneak over to that here quick. Um, so the big sloth is 48 inches. Um, for the the crossover patch, I believe, um, Barb, you are wondering, is it uh, 30 or 300? For the crossover patch, it is 300 boxes of cookies. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And uh, these other ones are related to, so you'll be able to see these, the comments about your why and uh, things. So thank you for sharing those. I'll, I'll read through those at the end of our presentation today. Um, so anybody else have any other questions regarding the um, new reward structure that we have? Okay, hearing none. Um, our profit structure for our troops has stayed the same. We still have 25% 20, of all sales. Um, for girls that are at any level. Um, so uh, the other one is if you have a cadet senior or ambassador level troop, you can opt out, meaning the girls only receive the patches so they wouldn't be eligible for those troop rewards and they could get 28% in proceeds if they would prefer instead. So it's on the, in the dollar val value sales of all the items that we are, that we are selling. As Joe will probably tell you, uh, we are one of the um, generous councils, I guess. Is that the way you yeah. say it, Joe? Yes, <laughs> I would say that. Um, you definitely give back. To, you're right near the top um, nationally because we work, we partner with about 100 councils. And, and so 
you don't always see this because your perspective is your counsel, but 25% is much, much higher than most councils give. Usually they're in the 10 to 15 percent range, just to give you some perspective. So the troops, and, and as Renee alluded to, um, pros <clears throat> in fall are much higher than in cookies um, on a percentage basis. And so, so I just wanted to just give you a nas uh, national perspective, um, and I'm sure that Rachel could tell you that as well, is that it, it's very, the proceeds are very high. The girls have the opportunity to earn quite a bit of funds. Thank you. Um, let's see. So next, uh, there are two ways for our girls to participate in the program. And so they can um, be both in person and virtual. And the great thing is, is they can be completely virtual if they would like to be. We do have the in-person nut order card, um, but we also have the online uh, system where they will be sending emails and sharing their link on social media to purchase magazines and nuts and chocolate. And you will see that girls have the opportunity when they send those emails, they can send them for girl delivery um, of those nut and chocolate items, or the person has them direct ship where the person then pay, pays the shipping. So um, we will talk more about all of those options in just a little bit. Um, but first, I'm gonna have Rachel take over chatting for a little bit. And so she can go through the products that Ashton Farms has available for our girls to sell this year. Great, thanks Sally. Um, as Sally mentioned before, I am Rachel with Ashton Farms. Um, I may look familiar to some of you because I actually used to work at the Girl Scout office in Madison. Um, I think I've been with Ashton Farms 12 years now, so that was before that. Um, so I do know some of the names and faces are definitely familiar to me. Um, but so we are the nut and candy provider for the council, um, super, Looking forward to how this year goes. We know that everything's been kind of turned upside down, but we're really hopeful that things, you know, can at least continue strong for the council and the girls to have a great successful program. Next slide. So I will cover the, for this portion, we'll talk about the in-person order card items. And so you can see here, sorry, um, we'll go through each item on the order card. And so these are what the girls can sell in person, you know, friends or family. And then these are also the items that would be available for the girl delivered portion. Um, so there's a lot more items that a customer can purchase online that will get shipped to them. But these are the items that the girls would be responsible for delivering out to their customers. So our first item up, we have our mint treasures in our super awesome Girl Scout brownie uniform tin. Last year we had the junior uniform tin, and so this year we have the brownie uniform tin. So definitely doing a series. We are already working on our idea for our Girl Scout uniform tin for next year. And this will be offered with the mint treasures in it, which are individually wrapped items. Next slide. New this year, at least in this format, we have deluxe pecan clusters in a tin. So everyone Eight loves the deluxe pieces. pieces. The, um, nope, it's actually, so there's a tray, but there's actually two trays in the tin. So there are 16 pieces in the, tr the tin. Um, the tin makes it a really great, easy gift giving item. Um, the box chocolate of clusters are still available on the order card. We'll get to those in a couple of slides, um, but it's a nice, different offering for one of the top selling items that the council offers anyways. Um, as I said, a really easy gift holiday giving item, um, having a package in the tin versus the box, the box chocolate. Next slide. Next up we have our thin minced almonds in the pop top can. Um, they are super amazing. Hopefully everyone was able to try them previously. It has a really great that thin mint, or the, I'm sorry, that thin mint flavor and dark chocolate coated almonds. Um, super delicious, $9 in the pop top. Next we have our dark chocolate peppermint pretzels. This was one of my personal favorites that we actually introduced last year. Um, so it's a dark chocolate covered pretzel, but then the peppermint pieces coated on top. And this is also makes it a super easy holiday gift giving item, um, you know, with kind of the snowflake themed bag. So it's in a stand-up bag, but different than some of our other stand-up bags that we offer. Another new item this year that we are really excited about are the, is our peanut butter trail mix. Um, it's offered in the stand-up bag. 
and it has, to me, it's the perfect salty sweet mix. It's got the cashews and peanuts, and then peanut butter gems, which are just like Reese's Pieces, and it has mini peanut butter cups, and then also the pretzels that add in some of that additional salt and crunch to the mix. So again, it's one of my favorite mixes that we have because it is that great blend of some of my favorite nuts and then chocolate items. So we highly recommend this item. And next we have the English butter toffee, um, the, another top selling item for your council. I know customers really enjoy it. We have a video available that shows how we make the English butter toffee. So that's always fun for the girls and troops to see, um, especially since these items are made here in Wisconsin. So that's also, you know, an extra benefit. So the English butter toffee, $8 in a box chocolate. And we have the dark chocolate caramel caps, um, another one of my personal favorites. It's got the dark chocolate coating with a like gooey caramel center with then sea salt sprinkled on top. Dark chocolate mint penguins. Um, it's a mint center and then in the super cute penguin um, molded chocolate shape, $8 in the box chocolate. And then here's the deluxe pecan cluster. So here is the tray in the box chocolate. Um, so again, a different form offering of the deluxe pecan clusters. I'm sure there will be customers that do purchase both options. As I said, the tin is great for gift giving and then the deluxe pecan clusters is what you just eat yourself. And I can eat a whole tray in one sitting. So they're super addicting, super delicious, but it's terrible to eat that many all at once. Rachel, is there the same? Is there the um, same amount of um, deluxe clusters in the box? Nope, I think that there's 12 in the box. Okay. Yep. And so next up on the order card, we have the peanut butter bears. So the cute little bear mold within the peanut butter center, $8 in the box chocolate. And then the Dulce de Leche Owls, another one of our molded chocolate items. So it's this one's milk chocolate with then a very creamy, caramel center. Box chocolate at $8. And chocolate covered raisins, a great staple. Um, we know we get a lot of feedback that customers love the chocolate covered raisins because they're such a nice plump um, raisin that's then chocolate coated. And that's in the pop top can at $8. And then we have fruit slices, another staple, just an easy offering, a good non-chocolate item um, and also non-nut item, $8 in the pop top can. And then dill pickle peanuts. Um, this one has been, we've had this like two or three years now and it's had a very interesting like resurgence. Um, so councils are adding it back onto their order card offering. It had been, you know, some councils their first year had it then took it off to have that online only item. But now we're bringing it back because there's, see there's is a great big following with the dill pickle peanuts. Um, it has a great dill pickle flavor. Um, so it is on the order card this year for customers to purchase um, at $8 in the pop top can. And then another very good staple on the program is the whole cashews in the pop top can, um, a great non-chocolate offering within the program at $8. And we have the honey roasted mixed nuts. Um, this is a great, it's a one pound jar um, with a twist top for the, instead of being a pop top, um, it's $11, but again, you're getting a great value at a full one pound of product of mixed nuts within this jar. And the next up is just highlighting the community care program. Um, all the items, customers can make a purchase and they can make a purchase for community care either on the order card, through the girl delivered portion of the girl sale, and even online, the customer can make, make this purchase. It is an $8 donation. The customer does not choose any of the items. Um, we work with the council to then determine what we will ship, and then we ship it locally, and then the council will disperse it locally um, within your community. And the troops will earn all their proceeds. The girls get all their correct credits um, for any care or community care items that are sold. And then as Sally mentioned earlier, if they sell six or more, care to share or community care units, they will earn the care to share patch. And that's it for the order card. I'll be back a little later for online items. Um, do we have any questions on, on the Ashton products? Oh, 
Okay, it looks like we can move on to the online girl experience. Uh, the online girl experience in the M2 system is centered around the girl getting to create an avatar that looks just like her. There are over 3 billion different um, avatar images in the system. We're constantly adding options. You'll see just a few of the images there on the screen. There's different heights and body types and hair colors and skin colors and shoe choices. Uh, we have the wheelchair option. Um, a number of the girls have alopecia, so we have the bald headed option and we're constantly adding in new uh, features to the program, um, options for the girls because they get to have more fun and we want them all to be able to create their likeness as much as is possible. And volunteers, you'll be able to create these as well. Really encourage your troop leaders to, to create their um, avatars, to print them out, show the girls so that the girls can have fun, they can critique them, and then they'll wanna create their avatars too. So getting started, what will happen um, first of all is when the troops first log in, all the volunteers will get a login email um, invitation. We'll cover this here more in a bit. Um, this will happen on the morning of September 27th, around nine o'clock. Um, so the, what we're gonna ask for the troops to do is to send out what we call a parent and guardian email blast. Um, council uploads all of the emails into the system. So when the troop leader first logs in, they'll have all the parents' names and emails for their troop. They can add in additional emails as well as edit the ones that are in there and then send out the parent and guardian email launch. Um, this then gets queued in the system till October 5th, which is the campaign start date for the girls. The parents will get this and it'll have an invitation for them to uh, register and set up the girls campaign. Um, if, actually, actually, our start date is October 7th. I apologize. October 7th is the start date for, for the girls. So I, I, those will get queued in the system till October 7th and the parents will get those. Uh, if the troop leader does not send those out, then I, what will happen is um, council will send out an, uh, an email invitation to parents, to the parents who did not get the parent and guardian email launch. Uh, however, girl, our parents do not need an invitation at all to register. They can go to the, either the website or they can go to the council page and go to the link um, on the council page to register. So we, we do that parent and guardian email launch um, just to give parents instruction and, and get, um, encourage them to participate in the program. However, it isn't needed. They can just go to the site and register. Um, and everybody will be new to the system this year. So they will log in as a first time participant and register. The entire site is available in Spanish using a toggle button and the entire site is mobile optimized as well. Registering an account, I don't know if you know this, but not every parent knows what council their daughter is in. Uh, actually, we find a lot of parents are in that situation. So we have a zip code va validator box right when they log in. So they will put in their zip code. That ensures that they're registering their daughter for the correct council. Then what we do is we have them find their troop number. From there, they can select their name. However, if they do not see their troop number or it hasn't been uploaded yet, they can um, check a box that says, I do not see my troop or group number. Uh, what will happen then is they can continue to register. We don't stop them from registering. They can continue to register. Their name is put in a holding tank called the 9999 troop. Council will then see that. Sally can go through and she can put that girl in the correct troop at that point. So um, that's just a handy tool for, so that we don't prevent girls from registering if they're not yet in the system. Then we ask three questions. What does being a Girl Scout mean to you? How much money would you like to raise in this program? And uh, what does your troop plan on doing with the money that you raise? And we ask those three questions because we put them in a message right on the girl's storefront. So now the supporter will see that as they're shopping. So now they're not only buying Sports Illustrated or peanut butter trail mix, uh, they're helping a girl go to camp or to Savannah, Georgia, or to support her causes. 
And when they know what it is they're supporting, that's what the value, what they're really getting for their purchases. And when they know what they're supporting, they'll uh, support the program in a better way. Then the girl gets to create that avatar. So she'll get to have all different sorts of options. She can have her uniform. She can have her G-I-R-L t-shirt. Um, she can have braces. She can have freckles. She can have freckles and braces. This year, just to let you know some of the new features, uh, we, the girl can have sloth slippers. She can have green or pink highlights in her hair. Uh, and then too, we have two different Girl Scout themed masks that they can um, have their avatar wear. Not everyone wants to be reminded of COVID, but a number of the girls and volunteers will want to have um, the mask on their avatar. It then shows up on the patch. So we we have a couple Girl Scout themed masks in there as well. Again, constantly adding images so that the girl can pers further personalize her campaign. When we first started the program, we only had blue, uh, black and brown is the shoe choices. If you know anything about girls, it's that you cannot just give them two shoe choices. They need lots of them. So now we have three different colors of flip-flops. We have Vans, we have Converse, cowboy boots, Uggs. I didn't know that sparkly flats were even a thing, but they are, and they're one of the most popular shoe choices. You can choose hiking boots. So again, just that's just one more way, giving the girl all those shoe choices, just letting her have fun and further personalizing her campaign. And then when she creates her avatar, uh, she can, if she would like, record a voice message. Then what will happen is when the supporter gets their email, if the girl has recorded a message, they can select play and hear the girl's message spoken in the girl's voice with the avatar's lips moving. The girl can then further- Go in there and play now. <laughs> What's that? Can we just go play? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and volunteers, you'll be able to on the 27th, when you get that access email in the morning, you'll be able to go right in and you'll be able to create your avatars as well. And you'll have all the options that the girls do and some additional ones um, as well. Uh, and then girls can upload a photo. Fewer and fewer girls are doing that because they would rather have their avatar image be the one in the front of their storefronts. Uh, girls can also upload a video. Girls that do so, because that video sits there on their storefront, girls that upload a video sell twice as much in online sales as the girls who don't. So a lot of girls are doing that and there's instructions on there as to how to create a safe video. Then the girl will go um, on to promote and launch her campaign. She does this by sending out emails with her storefront link to family and friends, as well as sharing on Facebook or Twitter. I can tell you that 27% of our online sales come as a result of social media shares. The girl can also print out business cards from the system. It has her avatar image on there, as well as her storefront code. So that's a safe way for her to promote her program, to direct people to her online stores. Um, she can even take pictures of those business cards and send those out to family and friends is another way to promote her store. That personalized patch that Sally talked about, we put that right there in the registration process so that girls can select their background there. They can select their avatar. Uh, they can see what their avatar looks like there. And then they can select the kayak background where the avatars in the kayak with their sloth friends swimming in the background, or they can choose to have their avatar sitting on a hammock with the mother and baby sloth hanging from the tree there in the back. Um, and then these are what the personalized patch looks look like, just to give you an idea. They're actually about two and a half inches by two inches, so a pretty good size there, uh, just to give you an idea what those look like. I can let you know that the girls get really excited about these patches. It's been the number one biggest driver in program sales um, that we have M2 have seen. So they really get excited. We let them make that, see what their avatar uh, will look like on their patch, choose their background during the registration process. They know what it is right there that they have to do to earn the patches. And then they can enter in their shipping address so that they get shipped directly to the girls. And so volunteers, you don't have to handle those. 
This is what the girls' campaign headquarters will look like. She can check up on her emails and social media shares. She can print out those business cards. This year, we are letting parents enter paper orders into the system. We'll talk more on that in a bit. Um, but the girl can manage her paper orders. She can look at the patches that she has earned and she can check up on her reports throughout the program as well. One of the fun things that the girl can do is she can go to her avatar's room. There's a, ro a virtual room where her avatar will show up and then there's 10 different virtual rewards that she can earn by taking certain actions in the system or meeting, meeting certain criteria. One of which will let her or let her sloth friend join her avatar in her room. So the room's really popular. And one of the reasons for that is there's a troop photo that sits there on the desk. It has all of the images of the girl and her fellow troop members there in the photo. Uh, girls who go to their rooms revisit them four times during the program. And in our focus group, we learned that this is in, this is in part because they like to see their friends' avatar images but then they really like to see their troop leaders' images as well. And some of the girls wonder if their troop leader is even tech savvy enough to create their avatars. So they have a lot of fun with that. They like to critique that. And so again, encourage your troop leaders to create their avatars. These are what the customer emails look like. And then there is a button there for the magazine store and for the nuts and chocolate store. If the girl has recorded that message, she can select play. And this is where, or sorry, if they, she's recorded that message, the supporter can select play and hear that girl's message spoken by her avatar. The online storefronts, these are what they look like. On the left there is the magazine storefront. On the right, the nut and chocolate storefront. They look identical. Um, the avatar image, if the girl, uh, that will sit there right front and center. If she's recorded that video uh, up on the top left is where that'll show up. Otherwise there will be a default video. So that's why girls like to create their video. It sits right there on their storefront. There's a goal chart on there. And then that message with the answer to those three questions that will sit there uh, right there on her storefronts as well. Joe, do you want to talk about the top supporters? Yes. So another thing that we do is we let um, top supporters be listed on the girl's storefront. So if Uncle Joe or Grandma is a top supporter, they can have the choice to have their names listed there on the storefront. They have to opt in to do that. The system doesn't automatically put their name on there. They have to opt in. And we don't put any sales numbers um, next to their names. Not everybody has the same means to support the program. We just like to, as a fun thing, put the top supporters on the girl's storefront. And if grandma on mom's side sees that grandma on dad's side, the top supporter, then of course she's gonna wanna be a top supporter as well. So that we, we have fun with that and we li list the top supporters, but, but no numbers there and the supporter has to log in, or sorry, opt in to be listed on the storefronts. So uh, Sally and Rachel touched on this before, but there are two um, options for supporters that are purchasing magazine or sorry, nuts and chocolates online. There's the girl delivered option. They select the girl delivered um, button there on the storefront. What will happen then is all of those options that are available on the uh, order card will become available for purchase. They can purchase any of those. They pay right there in the system with the credit card. They don't have to pay shipping charges. And then when the nut items arrive, the girl will deliver those to the customer. So a real nice convenient option uh, for, to limit some of that face-to-face -face because of what's going on around us. Um, customers, but customers can avoid that shipping charge and they don't have to pass um, cash back and forth either, which is a nice um, feature right now. The other option is the direct shipped option where they select ship to me. Uh, we also call it the convenience option. And the language that we use there is when the supporter sees that they see, I prefer the convenience of paying by credit card, having products shipped directly to me. I don't mind paying for shipping. So now they see what the convenience that they're getting for the shipping. Um, so then they don't mind the shipping charges as much. 
the other feature here, and I see what is the shipping charge. Um, I believe that we're gonna cover that here in a little bit uh, and, and the specifics of the shipping. Um, so the customer will be paying again upfront with the credit card for the direct shipped option. Only here they'll have more options as well. They'll have those nut order card item options available, but they'll also have additional online options um, available to them as well. They pay the shipping charge and they're shipped directly to the customer. So Rachel, if you want to jump in here. Yep. Yeah, so as Joe, I mean, he did a good explanation. So, um, and I mean, this is pretty similar to even how it had been previously with QSP. So we have the girl delivered option where customers are only getting the order card items that then the girl is responsible for still getting to the customer. Um, but yeah, it stays on that shipping charge. Um, so long as at least the customer is still close enough that the girl can get those to them. Um, but definitely this year, we're sure we will see um, an increase in this portion, as Joe mentioned, you know, not as much than cash handling and exchanging. So customers will probably want to do their purchase through the girl delivered store to at least pay via credit card. And then the girls still have to, you know, make arrangements to get that product to, to them, even if they end up doing, you know, kind of like a porch delivery um, but so we'll have the girl delivered portion with just the 16 order card items available plus the care to share program. Um, and then we also have the online version. So we will have through the online store, there are 25 Girl Scout branded items um, that technically councils, different councils could have on their order card. But then we have these 10 items that are online only. So no customer or no council would have these items available to purchase through the order card portion. Um, so we have the top three items are actually items that had previously been um, standard order card items, not necessarily at your council, but they have been available in the past. The Almond Crane Orange Crunch, the Black Forest Trail Mix, and then the Buffalo Ranch Pretzel Mix. Those are all in stand-up bags. And then we have three great tin item offerings. Um, so good holiday item, or even if, you know, a company wanted to make a couple of purchases to give out to, you know, either maybe some of their customers or their employees. We have the gourmet blend, which is a different assortment of different nuts. We have the gourmet caramel corn with almonds and pecans in a tin. And then we have the jumbo cashews in a tin. And then we have mocha cups. It's just a regular box chocolate, similar to the other box chocolates. And it's a, it's a cute coffee cup with then like a smooth mocha truffle filling. And a new item this year through the online store, we have a cookies and cream cup. Um, we're excited about it. It's a white chocolate piece, but then Oreo pieces kind of mixed in throughout. Um, so it's different, you know, it's, we've never had a white chocolate piece um, previously. So we're excited about it. It tastes like an Oreo in my opinion, it's pretty amazing. Um, so that will be online only this year. And then we will still offer last year's Girl Scout Junior Uniform Tin. Um, maybe a customer didn't want to make purchase of the tin last year, but now that they see that we have, oh, the brownie tin, and they realize that we are doing a series, they may still want to purchase last year's tin, and they can do that online. And then we'll have the Pop Top can of salt and pepper cashew cap. So these are items that can only be purchased online, but that does also mean that the customer needs to pay for shipping in order to get these items, because those will not be included in the girl delivered. And then here is the shipping chart. Um, the standard shipping, which is, um, it's shipped via all of our items, start with FedEx, but then the standard items start with FedEx and then go through the parcel post um, portion. So then it ends up being delivered by the post office. And so there has been no change in the cost to standard. The second day shipping option, those prices did increase a little bit this year, um, but those are shipped second day via FedEx. Um, and if a customer is making a purchase of chocolate items, they can make a choice and acknowledge that they want to ship those standard. But if those were to arrive melted to them, um, we would not replace that product. Whereas if they did choose the second day option and they arrived melted, we would replace those at no cost to the customer at all. Um, and I mean, I definitely will throw out there, especially if the customer is local here in Wisconsin. I mean, we're based in Wisconsin. All of these items ship out of Racine, Wisconsin. Um, so that usually is kind of a one to, do, to two day ship point anyways. 
um, obviously the standard ends up going through the post office. So that could be where things would possibly slow down a little bit, but um, I'm sure most customers could actually be pretty safe just staying in our standard shipping rate because of the fact that you guys are so close within us. <laughs> Um, so hopefully that helped cover the shipping question. Um, I know shipping is unfortunately necessary evil with an online program. Um, we know that's the biggest complaint and concern that we get as a vendor. Um, these are very true costs for us as a vendor. We do not make money on shipping. Um, it's just a matter of the convenience for the customers to be able to get these items sent directly to them. Um, we all know Amazon has probably ruined it for most of us because of their, you know, shipping with Prime. It's super fast. You don't have to pay for your shipping of orders. Um, so again, I know like there's always heartache with shipping. So I just at least want to acknowledge that we understand. We totally feel it too. Um, but unfortunately, shipping is a very true cost to the online business that we are, you know, moving into now with this avenue of sale. So anyway, this is something new that we're doing this year is we're allowing parents to enter um, order card um, orders into the system. Before you cringe, uh, we make it very simple for uh, parents to do. What we do is we have, uh, we list everything in the system in the same order that they are in on the nut order card. All parents have to do is they have to enter the quantity total sold for each of the items. Um, and that that's all they have to do. They don't have to worry about individual orders or anything like that. They just put in the total amount sold on the order card for each item throughout the course of the program. Only paper orders need to be entered into the system. The online ones are already in there and tabulated automatically. And then the system marries the paper orders with the online orders. And um, all in-person nut orders must be entered into the system to be processed. Uh, what we do is we give the, the uh, parents up till 10.59 p.m. on the night of October 26th to enter those into the system. What'll happen then is they get locked out and then the troops and service unit have an extra couple of days to uh, enter those in. So what we found is about half the parents in the first year enter those into the system and the troop leaders um, enter the rest. Uh, but we give the, the troop leaders an extra couple of days there so that they can enter in the ones that parents haven't entered in as well as um, to edit and to review and edit the orders for um, the parents who have. And I'll show you um, this from the volunteer perspective in a bit um, because we're going to take you live um, into the system. And I'm sorry, I don't know what happened to our screen here. I, I, I <laughs> it looks a little funky. I promise when you actually, the, the parents actually have to order, it's not going to look quite so funky. At least it looks funky on my end. I'm assuming it's funky on yours too. And Renee, um, right, uh, that's central time zone. So we're trying, I'm in the Eastern time zone in Columbus, Ohio. So um, I'm trying to uh, adjust that to you. Um, so it's 10.59 central time for the parents um, getting locked out on the night of the 26th of October. And then for the volunteers, 10.59 PM central time on the night of the 28th is when they're locked out. So then the reports for the girls, they're able to look at these broken down by each of the different sales categories. Uh, special reports up there at the top, I can let you know that those are the Excel reports where they can, the uh, girl can go in and check her various reports in Excel format. Online Nuts Girl Delivered, that's the report of where people have purchased um, orders online for a girl delivered. We also send that automatically to the parents' inbox, that report, so that they know who's already paid online uh, for when they deliver the items. And all of the reports are available. They can print out in web-based, or they can also download and print in PDF or Excel format. And they can email those reports in PDF or Excel to people as well, just by, there at the bottom, you can see 
they can put in somebody's email address and email that report in PDF or Excel. So the volunteer um, level access, volunteers, you get to again, create your avatar. You have all of those options that the girls have. In addition, um, you have some other ones as well. Uh, we're gonna take you live here in a minute, but we just have a couple of slides to show you. Um, there are a couple of things that we wanted to show you uh, that, that you should remind the troop leaders to do, and then we'll take you live. So the volunteers on that morning, uh, about nine o'clock central time, you will receive an email invitation to register to the M uh, M2 system. Um, you have to receive this email in order to register. So just, just so you know, troop leaders and service unit, you'll get this at the same time that morning of the 27th. And then after registering and logging in, you'll then hit the landing page. For the troops, what'll happen is we force them to watch, it's about 11, an 11 or so minute troop training video. It goes through all the icons in the system on their online dashboard and what they do. We force them to watch this before they can do anything else. So if they try to X out or fast forward, we make them watch it from the beginning. And it's important because it tells them how to manage the whole program. So really make sure that your troop leaders are watching that troop training video. You can even check service unit in the system to see if your troops have watched it. Once the troop leaders watched it to completion, it remains on their dashboard throughout the campaign so they can reference that. Service unit, we don't make you watch the training video, but we put it there on your dashboard and that we recommend that you do um, so that you see what the troops are seeing and you, you can help them out. Then the troop leader, uh, it prompts them to create their avatar again encourage them to do so and show the girls so that the girls can have fun and it encourages them to participate. We'll talk about that parent and guardian email blast here in a second. Um, then the, the volunteers um, at the end will be able to manage the not order cards and throughout they will be able to view the various reports. The parent and guardian email blast, this is what the screen will look like for the troops. Council uploads the names and email addresses of all the parents. They don't send anything out. Troops are able to add in the additional emails as well as edit the ones that are in there. And then they send those out and they get queued in the system until October, the morning of October 7th when the parents get those. And really encourage your troops to send these out because we did the research on this and there's a 72% open rate on parent and guardian email blast. We, at first, we had to double check. We didn't even believe it because that's such a high open rate. If you know anything about emails, uh, it's a much higher open rate than there would be if parents were getting something from council or from us vendors. So it really encourage your parents to, or sorry, your troop leaders to send out that parent guardian email blast. So with that, we thought that we would take you live to the volunteer admin site. So I will go ahead and do that and share my screen. So Joe, I think, oh, perfect. You're good to share yours. And um, so to answer a question, it, um, the uh, website is able to be used from like a phone, a tablet, yes. all of that kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was one of the questions in the, in the chat log. Um, if you are a volunteer with multiple roles, um, I believe Joe might show you um, how you're gonna yep. be able to switch over bef between that as well. So, um, and I think you'd probably only have to watch the video once cause it's once, I would assume it's once yep. per email, um, not per role. So. Yes, yep, absolutely. So if you have multiple troops, you just have to watch that one time. So I'm glad you asked that question. Um, what I wanna show you is for, for your roles. So what'll happen, um, I'm gonna show you the dashboard from the service unit perspective. So if you have multiple roles, let's say for example, you have a service unit role and a troop role, you toggle roles by clicking change role here, and then you go into your service unit role. Another thing that I'd like to show you is if, uh, a service unit or troop has um, is also a parent and they've used that same email address to register a daughter's campaign. 
this is where they can toggle between the campaign area and the volunteer site. So they would just go to, in this case, visit campaign area, and they can go over to the campaign site. And if it's in the campaign site, it would say visit volunteer area and they can toggle back um, that way as well. So that's how you toggle roles and you toggle the parent and volunteer um, sites in the system. So when you first, and this is what ha this is what will happen the first time too when you log in as a service unit. What it'll do is it'll prompt you to enter in your product and your award delivery addresses. You can do this here, or if you'd like to skip this, you can do that as well. And I'll show you how to enter those later on, but it'll prompt you to do that every time that you log in. For service unit, um, you get to create your avatar as well. So this is where you'll do this. So you'll Choose your various, between your various skin tones, your various, your various hairstyles. Uh, because I uh, registered my gender as male, that's why I'm getting the male options. So you'll have all of those options as well. And so you do that right there by clicking edit avatar. Service unit, we also wanted to give you a chance to earn your own patch, your personalized patch. Um, and you will get to earn, we'll show you a slide on this later, but just to let you know service unit, as long as your service unit sells one or more dollars throughout the campaign, you get your patch, you get the choice between those two backgrounds with your avatar on there. Um, council is not charged for those. Um, M2, we pick up the cost on the service unit patches and we do that to say thank you um, for, for doing all of the things that we talked about and just for really stepping up for the girls. So thank you. And we hope that you enjoy um, creating your patch as well. And so what it'll do is you will edit your avatar. And as long as you put in your, your address, when your service unit participates, those will get sent directly to you. Um, the campaign metrics will show up the first time that you, or when you log in. After that, they'll automatically hide. You can click hide campaign metrics here. That way that the system will run faster, but you can bring those back up by clicking show metrics. The troop training video, this is where it'll sit for you and for the troops right below campaign setup. I wanted to show you the first thing, manage admin users. So as a service unit, if I want to go ahead and add a, let's say I add in an address here, um, I think I have to, okay. So if I wanna add, for example, a troop leader, I can add them to an existing troop to give them access. So then what'll happen here is you can add the user, you put their name, their gender, you'll see their email address. And then service unit, if you wanna give somebody else access to your service unit, you can do that here. Then you select the service unit from the drop down box and can do that. Uh, if you're adding, uh, giving somebody a troop level access, you would do that here by selecting the troop level. Um, and you have, you can assign them any of the troops that are in your service unit. So, um, and then just so you know, FYI, troop leaders can only add in, they can give other people access to their troop. So that's the access that they can give for any of the troops that they have access to. I wanted to point out just a couple of things for um, just troubleshooting purposes. So if somebody So if somebody email or contacts you and says, I have, uh, I never got my access email, uh, you can, what you will want to do, well, first of all, you can hover here under roles and you can see which service units and which troops that person has access to. Uh, but if somebody says, I did not get, I did not uh, get my access email, first thing you want to do is check to make sure that they have the correct email address. Once you see that it's correct, you can click the plus sign here to the left of the person's name. If you click reset password, that'll generate an email, give it about 10 to 20 minutes for the person to get it. 
and that, that'll that give them the access email and they can go ahead and set that up. If for some reason there's a security function um, within their email or in the system, you can also, um, to where they're not getting the email, you can click temporary password. That'll generate a password for you to cut and paste and send to them. They can enter that in to sign into the system and then create their own password. You can delete people uh, if you delete them out of the system, it just deletes their access. It does not delete them, um, their service unit or their troop information. Uh, and then I wanted to show you too, if, if they have, if they're a troop leader, you can see when they last logged in and you can see whether or not they, um, they watched that troop training video. Managing admin users, this is, or sorry, service unit, this is where you can um, add in the product delivery, the reward delivery, um, that type of thing. Um, for the troop le levels, you can check those out. Um, however, just at the service unit level, you're not able to add girls into the system or add troops into the system. You have to contact council in order to, um, for them to do that. There's a messaging system in the system. It is uh, a convenient way for everybody to communicate. So service unit, if you wanna send, let's say for example, a message to a troop leader who's not yet logged in, you can do that. It'll give you a, a tip for what you might wanna put as a subject and you can send that to those people. Uh, troop leaders can send it to each of the girls. Um, so for example, if they wanna send one in to a girl who has not launched her campaign, they can do that. So just a convenient way for everybody to message throughout the system. Banking and payments, this is just a ledger for um, to keep track of the various uh, sales channels in the system. Council will do an ACH on November 9th. So nobody's actually making payments in the system. This is just a ledger to keep track. And from the troop perspective, there's an add girl payment button that they can, where they can keep track of the girl payments that girls have made um, just to keep track of those in the system. The reports, the reports, um, they can be broken down by any of the sales channels. You can click on special reports for any of the various uh, reports. Those are broken down in a number of different ways. The troop summary amount due report, this also sits as a link on the dashboard, so you don't have to go into the report section to ac access this. This is where you can see all the sales categories for your individual troops. You can also see their, all their campaign stats. So this is where you'd see their per girl average units, per girl average dollars. So everything's broken down by troop and you can check up on all of the troop activities and sales. The troops will have access to this as well, just for their individual troop. Uh, again, all the, uh, everything's available in web-based PDF or Excel format, and here's where you can email those to various people in PDF or Excel. And this is where the troop summary amount due report sits. Paper order entry, this is where as volunteers, you can edit the girls' orders. Uh, there will be an email icon here uh, with an email uh, where you can email a specific girl with any questions that you might have about her orders. If something stands out, it doesn't look right, you can email her directly. The Add Girl Scout tab, this will show up when service unit has access or troop leaders have access. If you get an order card, the girl's not in the system, this is where you can add her into the system for the purposes of putting her nut order into the system. You're not registering her for a campaign. You're just putting those, putting her into the system uh, to add her order into the system. And then council can later verify that she is in fact registered with the council. So make sure if you're adding a girl that she's not in the system already because we don't want duplicates. So that's really uh, the main things I wanted to show you with the system. And then just as you're navigating, something to show you, the quick dashboard links. Um, this is where you can see the dashboard links and you don't have to, uh, quit what you're doing. Um, you can navigate to and from each um, function in the system by doing that, by clicking that. So 
uh, hopefully. Uh, and, and then too, what I would say is just watch that troop training video and it will go over all of these functions in the system for a troop perspective, but there's also a lot of overlap there uh, for the service unit roles as well. So I'll go ahead, Sally, and turn this back over to you. Perfect, and I'll reshare my screen here in a second, and uh, I'll have to, uh, let's see, I think it is that one. That's it. Uh, yep, I just need to catch us up because Joe went through all of these uh, screens already for us. Um, uh, so that we could, uh, you could see oh, it in the system. In so a, a, just, just a reminder, you can print delivery tickets um, for your service unit uh, for each of the troops. So when you are um, handing out the product or the rewards, you'll be able to do that. And um, uh, troops will be able to do that for their girls as well. So, and then you do have the option to include the financial information at the bottom of that. And so um, for the girls and the troops that, you know, might be important to do. And that, just so you know that uh, the delivery ticket button, that will only show up to volunteers um, once the initial nut order has been submitted by council. So you're not gonna have, that's why you didn't see it on your dashboard right away, uh, because we don't want tickets to be printed out and then have online orders come in and have orders change um, on the ticket. We want those to be accurate. So. Just so you're aware, those show up once council has submitted their orders, the initial nut orders. So as you can see, uh, Joe had spoken about this. Uh, troops are, el the troop product chair is eligible to earn their uh, avatar patch as well um, if their troop has at least $600 in total troop sales. Um, but you as our product sales uh, person in the community, as long as you're uh, a, a troop, uh, participates and, and sells at least one dollar in sales, um, they are going to be sending that directly to you. So please make sure when you have the opportunity to go in, uh, you create your avatar as well. So materials, you should have already received the troop envelope, which provides the calendar and information for the troop um, BFF coordinator. Um, and then in that envelope, you can put uh, the money envelope. Um, the, it's the girl money envelope. It provides the information about the sale and doubles as a money envelope. Customers need to pay for their in-person orders at the time the girl takes the sale and they need to make the check out to either Girl Scouts, GSWIBC, or to the troop. Please remember that checks are not allowed to be written out to the girl or the parent if they choose to take that and then they uh, need to deposit it in their bank account and write one out for the troop. If something happens that that, um, that check bounces, we don't have any financial recourse. However, if, a, uh, if the check is written out to Girl Scouts or GSWIBC or the troop number and the troop puts it into their bank account and it, and it uh, goes NCSF or NSF, excuse me, um, they can, uh, you can, fill out a form for that and we will reimburse the troop the amount of the check as well as the fee that the bank charged them and then um, we will go after that person instead. Um, In-person order form, girls will use this to capture orders for their neighbors, family and friends. They also need to give, um, it also gives more detail about the troop and the girl rewards. Um, parents again need to enter these into their online profiles by October 26th at 10.59 p.m. The M2 flyer has information about going online, so they'll wanna look at that. And then the permission slip. Parents need to sign this to allow girls to participate in the BFF sale. There, if, a, if a troop truly wants to be virtual in the sense that they're not um, going to have the parent turn in the in-person order form to them and they don't want to take that permission slip, um, they can choose to use the fillable version that is online and then the parent could save that and email it to them. Or we do have a complete online version. What happens is when they submit that, it will go to our customer care team. The customer care team will save it in the girl's profile in our membership system and email it out 
then to the um, volunteer that's doing the BFF uh, coordination for their troop. So they can completely uh, keep that um, online. Um, with regard to the money, since it is due at the time of the order, so girls will need to still turn that in to, to the troop leaders, unless you could, they could choose to hand out a deposit slip. I know some troops that do that um, and have the parents deposit directly into the troop's bank account. Um, that's completely up to them and how they feel about doing that. Um, but yes, we are still having the girls take payment uh, in person um, for any in-person orders. Important dates, volunteer access, that's all volunteers. So you as the PSLs, as well as our troop volunteers, you have access on the 27th. The program officially begins on October 7th. Our in-person girl order taking um, ends um, on October 25th. That includes in-person as well as online. Um, the parents have one day to uh, get those paper orders entered. Uh, so October 26th at 10.59 p.m. Central Time. Uh, and then troop leaders have until the 28th at 10.59. Unfortunately, you guys also get locked out on the 28th as well. So it's really important that troops are getting their stuff in um so that we make sure if not we at the council have another day i believe before we get locked out and the order is then submitted to get those candy nut items delivered um, as joe mentioned earlier we will be doing the ach withdrawal from the troop bank account on november 9th and then you all will be receiving your product the week of november 16th we don't of course know delivery dates yet our uh, agents don't like to put those calendars together, those delivery routes together until they know which communities are actually participating in the sale. Um, let's see. So what's next? Please remind your troops to log in, uh, watch their training video and create their avatar. Um, encourage the troops to, to set up that parent guardian launch email. So on the 7th of October that morning, it will be sent out to those girls so that they can get in there and set up their campaigns and, and get going. Um, please emphasize the simplicity of this sale. It, it, it's a great money maker for our troops with not a lot of work involved for our girls and even for our troops. We do have um, our own customer care team at Badgerland Council, but I'll let Joe explain a little bit more about the customer care team that is at M2. Uh, I just would like to add that we have a customer care team that feels just as strongly about Girl Scouting as we do. Uh, we have a customer service office in Huron, Ohio in the Cleveland area. We just hired on a bunch of new people to uh, help you all out this fall. You can see the phone number and the email address there on the screen in front of you on that card on the slide. Uh, I wanted to that we stay in close touch with Ashton. Uh, there is a phone number on all of Ashton's products. If you have a specific question and you want to call them on that. Uh, however, we are very familiar too with all their products uh, and we can handle everything, all the inquiries. If there's something that uh, where we needed to direct you to Ashton, we'll do that. Uh, and really 100% satisfaction uh, guarantee outside of where there's the two-day shipping and people need to select that um, uh, to guarantee their product. But, but, but all in all, just please come to us with any questions that you have uh, and, and we'll help you out. Great. So that is all that we have for you. It is 731. I'm sorry we went a minute or two over. Um, we did wait a minute or two for everybody to get online as well. So. Thank you for all you do. You are the difference. Um, we love the fact that you are contributing with us and that um, you are helping these girls have positive experiences in this program and appreciate all you do. If there is a question we didn't get to that might have been in the chat log, I will look at those and try to circle back around. But otherwise, shoot me an email, uh, eganss at gsbadgerland.org. We will be sending out the list of all the troops in your communities. Um, within the next couple of days so that you can get those materials out to those troops as well as your calendar your calendar of what to do isn't much different than what you just saw in this um in this presentation 
Um, I did send out an email last night that had a link to this presentation. So if you did not receive that, let me know. Um, it is a big file, so uh, I had to send it via a link um, to Hot, Hot Link, um, I believe is the name of the company that I use. And so um, you'll be able to pick up that, that uh, presentation, the PDF version that way. So again, thank you very much for all you do, not only for the um, product sale program, but everything that you also do in your community. Have a great night. Thanks, Sally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.